I'm Erin. I'm the host of the Trial Site News Podcast, and we're back with a, another great episode, a great guest. With me today, I have Alexis McLaughlin, and she is the CEO of 2020 On Site. So Alexis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, and where are you based? Just based in Boston. Boston. Okay. Okay. I'm in New York City, so not too far. So um, to start, do you, do you mind telling us a little bit about you, your background, and um, then how, how you started 2020 on site? Sure, yeah. So a little bit about me. My background is in optometry and optical retail. So before 2020 on site, I was at Luxottica. I ran the Target Optical business there, and I had jobs at, at Pearl Vision before that. And actually joined this company in 2018. It was founded in um, 2014, and then I joined in 2018. And we're the leader in mobile vision exams and assessments. We provide patient-centric vision and clinical trial services to increase accessibility and reduce potential barriers to high-quality vision care. Where um, are you guys based? So based in Boston, here based in, Boston. in Boston, yep. Okay. And pre-pandemic, we were operating in Boston, Atlanta, and Chicago. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can imagine. So our business originally was bringing eye exams to employees at work. Um, and right. so during the pandemic, it was a bit challenging, uh, given most of our <laughs> employers and employees were not at work. Right. And um, and so we really, I, I would say, retrenched to Boston, focused on Boston and the Boston market once we could get back to operating, once it was legally, once we were legally allowed to operate again. And then we expanded our services to clinical trial support. So that happened during the pandemic where we had a lot of pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies reaching out when their clinical trials were really in crisis during that time and wanted to know if our capabilities, our mobile pay capabilities could be deployed uh, directly to their patients' homes to take some of those assessments that were going to be missed because they were not able to travel to their clinical trial site. So right now we're operating all around the country. That's so cool. And it's so convenient. So yeah. people, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just think about going to like the eye doctor and I, I never go, I mean, I should go, but I, I mean, I'm like, yeah, if there was like a mobile unit right outside my building, I'd go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we find that, I mean, we're really expanding the market because yeah. there's so many people that are just like you that totally. delay care, you yeah. know, I mean, we don't <laughs> always, and, and you know, study after study, the eyes are your most important sense. Most people say that the eyes are the, you know, vision is their most important sense. And so many people delay care. They're not getting anywhere close to annual eye exams. And so we recognize by bringing care directly to the patient, we're reducing some of that friction point and really expanding compliance with annual eye exams. Yeah. I mean, that, that's so important in terms of just, and even just like picking things, problems up early and preventing, you know, that progression. I was reading on your website that, um, it, well, I, I read this statistic, one out of four kids have undiagnosed vision problems, which, which is a lot of kids. And when you think about how that can affect, you know, the way somebody learns, it's right. Yeah, it's huge. And you guys do work with schools or, and you do volunteer work. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So We, um, in partnership with the New England College of Optometry, go and screen kids in Boston public schools. And so um, the students from NECO will go and do screenings. And then for kids that fail, we go and do a full comprehensive eye exam. So go on site to, you know, some of the, the underprivileged areas and maybe they're not getting access to high quality vision care or access to vision care at all. And, um, and so we bring our doctors and all of our exam technology directly on site. And then we actually partnered with Warby Parker who donated glasses. So it was really a comprehensive partnership. And we were doing a little bit of work, really a much larger partnership last year with the Boston Public Schools. We were not able to do it this year, but absolutely hope to get back to the schools because uh, there was actually an article in the Wall Street Journal earlier this month about how the pandemic has affected children's eyesight. So many kids on devices. So it's not, I mean, kids, adults as well, yeah. but there's been a real deterioration and optometrists are seeing a much higher incidence of myopia in children. And so really, really important, I would say to all the moms out there, dads or who my parents out there yeah. uh, to make sure before your kids go back to school that you're getting them an eye exam. 
So I wanted to talk to you, to you about, um, so you help provide decentral, decentralized patient first clinical studies so I guess, can you talk a little bit more about that and maybe explain what that means to someone who may not know? Yeah, um, and, and we've done a lot of research as we've started to support clinical research that the amount of clinical research, you know, the amount of trials that fail to deliver on time, 85% of clinical trials don't meet their enrollment timelines or, or don't meet their clinical trial timelines. And so there's been a big push to decentralize clinical trial, clinical research, meaning that you're taking, you know, assessments, wearables or things like that, where people can get assessments at home or there's home nursing where, some, you know, somebody's going into the patient's home to really try to encourage more people to participate in clinical research. It can be a real burden on patients who have to trial to a site um, multiple times. So if you have a full-time job or a new child care, you know, the amount, the, the number of people that can fit clinical research into their lives is much smaller than the population of those that would benefit from clinical research. And so the push towards decentralized clinical trials has been going on for, for many years, but like many things, the pandemic really accelerated the move to decentralized clinical trials. So mm. we now um, are, are performing some assessments. So not every assessment, we're still providing the, the um, data to directly to the site, but we'll go directly to the patient's home. And for us right now, we're focused on um, rare disease, but because these patients have to travel quite a long ways to get to the site. So we're taking the assessment directly to the patient's home, collecting all the data in their driveway or in a location convenient to the, to the patient. We're collecting all that data and then we're uploading that data and sending it directly to the site so that they're not missing some of those key assessments um, you know, within the, within the, the window that, um, that has sort of been dictated by the sponsor. I mean, that, that's amazing. You're making the whole process so much easier for both the participants and the people running the trial. Um, yeah, and we have yeah. heard, I mean, we have heard because it's a burden, I mean, it is, bur it is a totally. burden. And, and for these patients, they're, they have blinding, you know, potentially blinding conditions. So, I mean, there's so much is already so challenging. And so yeah. not only do they have to travel, but normally a caregiver has to travel as well. And so right. it's a huge burden on the patient and on their families. And, um, and so if we can make it a little bit easier, it, it just it means that they can go about their, their lives and they don't have to travel, you know, every few months to the site. And we've had patients tell us that without our services, they would have dropped out of the study. Yeah, um, that's And the obviously thing. each of these patients are, you know, so, so critical to getting the data um, to hopefully get this, this um, the, you know, this Absolutely. onto the market. Yeah. And the dropout rate is probably, or pretty historically pretty high. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And, and during the pandemic, you oh, know, the, yeah. most oh. of the trials yeah. were suspended or, you know, canceled completely. So the impact on clinical research during the pandemic was just enormous. That sounds like a great service that, that you're offering. Um, you mentioned rare diseases. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, because I was reading about it earlier, um, inherited retinal disease. It's, it's a genetic disease and, and you're doing work in this area. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I think there's, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of inherited retinal diseases. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's any time, any study is working in rare disease, you know, each patient is so important to the study because it's rare. And so finding patients that have the disease and being able to allow them to participate in clinical research. So this is one area where, you know, we think our services are really, really important to the success of the study. I think another area where we really focus is around diversity and, um, you know, many times it's the same sites or same areas or, you know, it's, it's large metropolitan areas that have academic centers where people can participate in research. And so not everyone can always access clinical research. Um, and so, you know, we think by bringing the assessment directly to the patient or directly to potentially an underserved area, that we can also expand diversity within clinical research. And this has been known for years and years um, that there's a lack of diversity, that the participation in clinical research does not reflect the population as a whole. And, you know, specifically for us thinking about ophthalmology, um, 
you know, 4% of Black Americans suffer from AMD, but only 0.17% of trial participations are African American. And so, you know, we know within ophthalmology that there's an opportunity, but it's it's true across all of clinical research. Yeah, 100%. And um, that's great that you guys are doing that. And hopefully uh, we'll see more of that in the future. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how you guys are, are you, what are you doing in terms of screening? Are you, um, are you working in screening right now or you're expanding? Um, that's, in, that's in the works. Yeah, so we're, we're expanding. I think, you know, we're really looking to how do we help enable sites to be more effective and how do we enable more sites to participate in clinical research? Because I, you know, whenever you're up against a deadline, you know, it's just human nature. We're going to go to the same sites that we know have participated before, which means you're getting access to the same patients. And so we think that there's an opportunity to really expand the number of sites that are participating in clinical research or allow those sites to enroll more quickly. So we could go out to certain areas and do a lot of screenings so that we're, you know, we're taking some of the burden off of the site, we're freeing up kind of chair time at the site, um, you know, at least doing the pre-screen to figure out who's eligible and then passing those patients along to the site. So, you know, we really think that we can help both sponsors and sites to accelerate enrollment, which we know, as we've talked about historically, you know, most sites are not meeting their enrollment timelines. And especially now, you know, the pandemic also had an impact on sites where they laid off, you know, they, they laid um, off people at the site. Mm -hmm. Um, they're also, you know, backlogged from, so, you know, from the sites being closed. And so we know a lot of the sites are overworked as well. So I think there's a real opportunity to help support some, you know, kind of restarting a lot of these clinical trials that were maybe suspended, um, during COVID. 100%. And just out of curiosity, how many, um, I know it's changed with the pandemic, but like in terms of like mobile, units um like how, how many is there a number that you have out there so we have five, uh, five that are yep that are you know some of them are focused on boston we're, we're also getting back to work doing routine optometry in boston uh we find yeah. you know there's there's folks that are back at work especially in the manufacturing or in labs um where people maybe never stopped working and so now right. we're we're going back on site to serve them so we're serving in boston and then we have some of the mobile vision clinics that are traveling the country and we're supporting not only clinical research, but also post-marketing access to care. So once a drug is live in the market, we also can help do safety surveillance. And so we're, we're also supporting some of that as well. So five, uh, five currently, and we have one that's under construction right now and expect uh, to launch that in October. That's amazing. That's, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, you'll and I'm sure you'll get busy as the pandemic starts to wind down. Hopefully, if that's what it's doing right now, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, we're seeing most of our so we have about 500 employer clients. So these are folks where we go on site to see their employees, and many of them are thinking about on site services like ours as part of their return to work strategy. Yeah. Um, you know, there's I think people are hesitant to go back to a workplace, or you know, they've gotten comfortable working from home. They're not sure what it's going to be like. And so I know there's a lot of employers that are thinking, you know, how can I make the workspace safe and healthy and, and give people an incentive to come back to work? So we're having a lot of conversations, mostly after Labor Day. I think people are letting the summer kind of play out. Um, but at least here in Boston, most companies are planning to go back to work sometime in September and October and thinking about on-site services like ours as part of the return to work strategy. So we're definitely, we're booking, we're already booking <laughs> uh, and getting pretty full as we get into the back half of the year. So if I was interested in these types of services, what, what, where would I go? Who should I contact? Yeah, so you go to 2020onsite.com. Okay. So we have both uh, information there on the routine optometry side of the business. So for businesses and, and a lot of pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies are our clients on the employer side. So if you're located in Boston um, or the New England area, feel free to reach out if you're interested in having us come on site to see your employees and deliver eye care, eye exams, contact lens glasses safety glasses, anything you need. And then there's also information there uh, for clinical trials and post-marketing access to care. And you can fill out a form uh, and we can contact you with more information. Thanks so much for coming on. Is there anything else that you wanted to add or maybe anything else I glossed over missing? No, I think, I mean, I think, you know, 
we all are interested in helping people manage through kind of the pandemic and manage through the, yeah. the impact of the pandemic. Yeah. I think eyesight being one, as we've talked about. Um, I and, haven't had my eyes um, checked at all. <laughs> yeah, as many people. Have I haven't been to the den. I haven't been to anywhere. I went last week. I went to the pedicure. It was the pedicure place for like the first time ever. I felt sorry for the pedicure lady. I was like, oh man. <laughs> But yeah, I, I know nobody's done. It's just getting back into the swing of things. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we, we are passionate. We're passionate about, about passionate about reducing friction to care, whether yes. it be in traditional optometry settings or in clinical research. And we're going to continue on that journey. It's been our passion since we were founded. And, um, and that's where we're going to continue to focus and excited to, to get back to work, to get back to, to all the work that we were doing pre pandemic. Well, it sounds great. I look forward to, to uh, learning more and seeing you guys expand and, um, you know, adding, contributing to uh, research, really, and, and helping a lot of people. So thanks. Thanks so much, Alexis, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sure thing.